English has been here for roughly speaking a thousand years since uh, yeah. settlers came from northern Europe. We call them now the Anglo-Saxons. Um, and there have been a number of dialects and accents in all parts of the UK since that time. So l the language that has been spoken in different parts of the UK has always been very, very different ever since it arrived here. Um, but from the middle of the 19th century onwards, uh, there was an accent that emerged that we now call received pronunciation, or sometimes RP for short. Uh, this is actually quite a young accent in terms of how long English has been around in the UK on these shores. And um, this accent emerged in the public schools. Um, from the early 1900s onwards, uh, there was a, a, an increasingly large middle class here in England, uh, and they began to send their children to the public schools, the boarding schools. So increasingly large numbers of uh, children were going to these schools and um, they all uh, aspired to a similar type of education and similar ideals and standards. And ultimately they were populated by teachers generally who'd been to Oxford or Cambridge who came from the same social circle uh, over a number of years and of course they therefore influenced each other and, and an accent emerged in these schools that was free from any um, regional elements. It was a neutral accent if you like. Uh, you couldn't tell where a person came from geographically uh, if they attended one of these schools. And so this was about the middle of the 19th century that larger numbers were beginning to go to these uh, schools and the children were taught there and they were taught elocution, pronunciation, they were brought up to speak like each other and then they went on to, or they aspired to go on to occupations um, such as um, within the city, within academia, um, professions, the sort of uh, middle class um, professions that, that, that they aspired to bred that kind of accent themselves so it kind of was a self-perpetuating thing. Um, however, as I say, it's a very young accent. It um, emerged then in the 19th century and became more popular in the 20th century as a result probably of the fact that it was the accent that the BBC adopted. The BBC, the British Broadcasting Company, um, was founded in the 1920s and the first general manager, a, a gentleman called Lord Reith, established a committee to decide what type of speech would be broadcast on the BBC. Initially it was radio, then of course it became television. Uh, and the accent that they, this committee chose, there were some very famous people on that committee. Daniel Jones was a phonetician at University College London. Um, George Bernard Shaw, the playwright, was on the committee and a number of other people. And they discussed whether they should use a variety of accents or um, this newish accent, received pronunciation. And ultimately the committee decided to adopt received pronunciation. So therefore for the first 50, 60 years maybe of the existence of the BBC, the only voice that you heard broadcast on the radio and on the first days of television was this neutral, uh, non-regional, typically middle-class English accent, if you like, the one that perhaps most people uh, over the world associate with the UK, the, the accent of somebody like Hugh Grant, for instance, the actor. Um, and so therefore, if it, it was adopted by the BBC, everybody in the world heard this voice and uh, because of the nature of society in the 20th century, particularly post-war, post-Second World War, where all of a sudden uh, social differences were breaking down. It became more and more possible for people to move up through the social scales. People were able to go stay on at school longer, go to universities. Uh, people from the lower middle classes and from the working classes were for the first time able to move upwards socially, if you like. Um, and one of the trappings of being part of the middle class is this accent. So therefore this accent became very aspirational. It was an accent that I think large numbers of speakers who wanted to get on in life, wanted to become part of the middle class, adopted this accent or tried as best they could to, to imitate this received pronunciation accent. So in the middle of the 20th century therefore this, this posh, originally public school accent spread throughout the UK as a, an accent of the middle classes, if you like. It was first perpetrated through this public school system and then through universities, through education. The thing about received pronunciation is it, it refers only to the pronunciation of the speakers. It, it doesn't refer to the vocabulary or the grammar. Um, all speakers of received pronunciation speak what we know as standard English grammar. In other words, they don't use 
grammatical constructions that are non-standard, so things like I didn't do nothing, they would always say I didn't do anything. They also don't use dialect vocabulary or regional vocabulary, so they use very standard English structures and very standard English vocabulary, but they pronounce all the words that they use and all the constructions that they use in a way that reveals nothing about their geographical background. It is a neutral accent. Um, as I say, from the 20th century onwards, it, it probably grew in numbers um, to the point where most recent surveys I've seen have suggested that 2% of the UK population, roughly speaking, speak received pronunciation. So that's still not a very large percentage of the UK population. And of course, the UK population in terms of English speakers worldwide is a very, very small percentage. So um, although it's probably the most widely known accent of, of the UK, the most widely recognised because people associate it with films and television and radio and any stereotypical cartoon figure, if you like, of, of, of British society. It's a very well-known accent. It's still not the most widely used accent in the UK. Most Wedgwood is dishwasher proof and dishwasher safe. And I would say that it is all safe, providing you follow the instructions on the leaflets and follow the recommended named proprietary brands of dishwasher powders because those are the tried and tested ones. What you mustn't do with your gold-edged Wedgwood is put it in the microwave. 